it's all psychological and it's also very spiritual. And I do think that when you enter the acting field, the roles have already been chosen for you spiritually, right? Because if time mm -hmm. doesn't exist, it's all happening at once, right? Essentially, it's already all been chosen. So then your job is to follow what feels aligned so that you can line up with the character at the right time. So then when that audition comes, like I've had some crazy cathartic experiences where I happen to have an audition and the exact thing that the audition is, I went through the day before, ended up booking the role. Like it was all very, um, very spiritual. And also I think we all chase that feeling of forgetting time, <laughs> at least I do, <laughs> whether it's conversation or dance or whatever it is. I just, I need yeah, to just, yeah, finally forget and to remember. Huh? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, booked my first, or it was my second. I was still testing it out for a while. I had, it was 2019, I'd booked my first uh, smaller movie and it got pushed back and canceled because of COVID. And then I came back and booked another TV show and we went straight into it. And I was still testing the waters with acting and really like loving the idea of it, but I hadn't really felt that magic with it yet. And um, we were rushing on one day of the, of the shoot days and I, we had about like five or six scenes which is unheard of usually you do like two <laughs> and they were like we just don't have time we need to get it done all in one day i luckily am uh, i i like over prepare so i had already memorized the entire like all of it so i was just like okay um but i hadn't really studied this one scene it was a specific scene my lover my girlfriend the one i loved um she's she was dealing with a she's a drug addict essentially and she ran into the bathroom in this scene to go and take like a bunch of the pills to so basically overdose. And I didn't have time to prepare. I didn't have time to, you know, do all of the acto things, <laughs> not listening to a playlist or writing or whatever. I just kind of went into it and I didn't have any expectation for it. And I was kind of exhausted from the day. So I was like, okay, hey guys, whatever I have left, it's yours, you know? Um, and I was kind of feeling bad about that too. Cause I was just like, oh no, I don't know if I'm going to do good at this. And I had the craziest cathartic experience of my life. Essentially, I got out of the way is what I'm assuming what happened. I got out of the way. And it was almost like I, it sounds kind of cheesy, but it almost felt like I was crying for and with all the people who had experienced that moment where they're trying to save the person that was overdosing. And I just couldn't stop crying and I was holding her and they didn't even call cut. We just kept rolling because I was just like so in it and I was shaking and I just, I couldn't believe like what the body does, you know, because it truly, I think that's what's so fascinating about, of course, like everything that we have learned is like the body doesn't, you know, know the difference between something that you perceive and something you've actually experienced because if you perceive it in a certain way, that's how your body will react to it. And my body just intelligently perceived it as that real thing. And I just think that's so fascinating. And so once I was done, I could, I was laughing uncontrollably because <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like this is acting. And I remember my castmate, um, Anna Lynn McCord, wonderful, wonderful actress. Um, she was like, you're an actress. And I was like, oh. and so ever since then, you know, you don't always get that. And, and it's, it's kind of like with podcasting, every, every episode is different. <laughs> You don't know because you're kind of you're 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 having a dance with another person, so you have to also be really present as to what they're bringing. You can't make up your mind too much when you go into certain scenes. You really have to be fluid with what's present. Um, you have to be honest with what's present because that's that's how the magic will come up. You know, I've had the, some of the best moments I've had on camera were not even in the script, and it just felt right to do, and so I did it. So. It really is following intuition. And I think that's been the most exhilarating part of this um, is because now I have this amazing excuse to get super, you know, strong, as to have a super strong relationship with my intuition. But it's also, you know, I, I will say acting is, it's, uh, you can't take things personally. You know, I've done that hundreds of thousands of auditions and you kind of have to uh, trust that there's, you know, a role for you and that you just keep going. And usually I'm pretty good about that, but sometimes it'll get to me and I'm just like, oh no. Um, but I use that. And I think that's what's so fun is no matter what I'm feeling, I just go into my ear, like, use it, 
<laughs> whatever it is, use it. And I think I've applied that to my life as well. Instead of trying to um, make sure I am what I want to be in that moment, I feel into what's actually going on. And I utilize that energy as like the force instead of trying to essentially box myself up and to know I need you to be happy and present and I need you to be the best version right now. You're filming a podcast, get your shit together. You're driving on the freeway being like, ah, 15 minutes late. Great. No worries. Um, and then just transfer all of that into the present moment as opposed to, you know, essentially lying yourself, which that does work sometimes. Fake it till you make it is a real thing. Um, but I've at least right now have been practicing, um, being honest with the energy that I'm coming from and utilizing it and almost alchemizing it in a way, as opposed to like pretending it's not there. But I could go on and on about the lessons and acting. It's actually insane and it mirrors life. I feel like there's so many parallels between acting and so many of the creative arts in life in general. You 100%. Know? Like we're all in our life to some degree playing a character, like whatever identity or role we're currently playing. And oh, it goes so deep. It goes so deep, you know? And so like, that's just an external manifestation of picking a role believing you're that person in that moment. And uh, what have you found? How is that translated? If it has at all, I'm curious to like the role or character you play as Alexis in your life. It's given me so much room to breathe. Fluidity. Because no, yeah, now I'm I'm not, uh, even with fashion, like I don't, I don't necessarily hold myself to a certain idea anymore. I just, whatever feels good in the moment, I throw it on. Whatever feels good to say in the moment, I throw it on. And I spent it's exhausting trying to monitor yourself to keep into a certain archetype that you think you should be. It's absolutely exhausting. It showed me that the personality is not something that's so, you know, fixed. Fixed. Yeah. And you can really just play and have fun. And I think that's, I, I'm sure you understand. We get so much information, <laughs> so much knowledge, so much wisdom. And you're like, oh my God. And then all it tells you to do is to really just sink into, you know, this life energy that is you and have fun and play again. Like it goes back to that simpleness. And that's so fun because now I know what to do now. I kn Knowledge is so fun to consume, but I know what to do. And it's to honor that child self and keep playing with her as long as possible and never let her, you know, be dismissed in my life. And from that, that's the divine path, you know? It's like your child self will, she's the one that's gonna take you there, you guys, not your adult self. Your adult self will keep you safe and do the taxes and whatever. <laughs> but the child self is, you know, that's where, it's, that's the leader in a way.